This is the podcast, not an interview. This is a conversation. No gimmicks, just reasons. 84 reasons. Come holler at me. Everybody, I am Ben True, fresh off a of super duper bowl. We got a big show ahead of us today. My guest is the guy who looked, I mean, what played in the Alabama Mississippi All Star game, played in the All American All Star game, four star linebacker. Don't eat vegetables, don't, have, don't ask me. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't eat vegetables, you're gonna have to put it in a smoothie. <laughs> repping, the, repping the great state of Alabama. Birmingham, Ramsey High School, Jeremiah Scooby Williams. We going to Wichita School? How you doing, man? I'm, I'm I'm pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Now, Scooby, man, I you know a lot of times when people talk about recruiting, right? People always think it's the it's the team, it's the team, it's the team, or it's the school, it's the coach. I know you got recruited by Christian Robinson. I know he's no longer with Florida, but just talk about how. You want to have a coach like Christian who can just talk to you. I heard it every to every conversation y'all had, y'all didn't talk about the same thing twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Coach Ciro actually came and visited me his first time my 11th grade year. And um, it was kind of funny because anytime he had to come through like Birmingham or like just come close to Birmingham, he'll always come and make sure he's talking to me, come talk, talk to me. And like every time we came and talked, it was never about the same thing. And, and, it, and most of the time, it wasn't even about football, it was mostly about like, life and how he could help me and how I could help him. And it basically just grew from there. And uh, I realized like in my recruit process that like this guy is gonna be like a you feel me like a like a role model to me or like somebody I, I, I can depend on whether it's with football or without football. And that's what he is. Like even though he's not my coach still, if I ever needed to talk about something I feel like I'm comfortable enough with him just to like have that conversation and I know like he's a good person to trust. And Scooby, most of the time, a big time recruit like yourself, I think he was rated the number four player in the state of Alabama when you came out, picked a lot. You know, you have offers from everywhere, basically any team in the Southeast right. that that new football offered you. It Most of the time, people be thinking that, oh, I got to go to this school because of the tradition. Or I got to go to this school because of how many guys they put in the league. No one would ever think, no, man, this is a conversation. Somebody just talking to me like a person. Like, I know I, know I can play. I know y'all want me to come here. But this dude, yeah. I mean, being like C-Rob, he just knew how to talk to you. Being a former player himself playing at the University of Georgia, do you think that kind of stuff resonates with a lot of players? Because you guys are big time. Obviously, you know, it used to be being in your DMs meant something different. Now, y'all got coaches all in your DMs. <laughs> say, Listen, coach, man, I didn't, I, you know, I saw, I saw, your, I saw your, uh, you know, your commitment video, but do you think that's the best selling point when you out there recruiting trail saying, look, I, I know I'm a big time athlete, but if you could just talk to Scooby like Scooby instead of just how can Scooby help us win games? That seemed to uh, resonate with you guys a lot more. Yeah, um, just being able to hold a conversation outside of football. It not only, like, goes along with the player, but, you know, in order to get the player, you got to get the parents. And he made, he did he did not he did the same thing not only with just me, but with my parents, too. So my parents were really like, okay, this guy's not just one of my son to come here to play ball. He ain't, Like, this guy actually wants me to, like, do good in life. So, yeah, um, just being able to, like, pitch something else other than football to recruit. It goes a long way to the parent and the player. So yeah, I feel like that's a that's a key thing in crew nowadays. A wise man once said to a great player, "Your best ability is availability and versatility." So, 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 right. Something in that something in that regard. I heard a a young man say, "Man, listen, I don't want to come off the field when it's third down. Let me get out there and cover somebody. Or if I got to rush, I'm gonna look like T.J. Watt, the brother of J.J. Watt. That's 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 a credible bloodline. Or I'm gonna be a physical freak like Isaiah Simmons. I mean." Do you see yourself having that level of versatility? You talking about names like T.J. Watt? I mean, defensive. I mean, or NFL defensive player of the year, Isaiah Simmons, Mister Do All, do everything for them Clemson Tigers back in the day. How would you describe mm -hmm. your game? Um, in high school, I played pass. I, I, I mainly play on, off the edge, and I played a little bit off the ball towards like the end, like 11, 12 grade year. But um, I feel like I harness those pass rush abilities, and now since I've been in Florida, I've been playing off the ball a lot. So since I'm, I've been grooming my past versus since high school and I, I didn't incorporate it off the ball, stat linebacker, I feel like I can do do it all. Like third down, I can rush the pass or first 
first and ten. Now I'm in the box. I feel like honestly, I feel like um, as long as I keep like harvesting these, like my uh, my like um, what's the word? What my what's your, what's your abilities. Doing? I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like I can be like that. Yeah, I feel like I can be that Isaiah Simmons. You feel me? Because I I did it in high school, so I feel like I can do it on the college level. I'm just got to keep working. Because, you know, everybody's just as good as you. You go from Christian Robinson. Now you got Mike Peterson. I mean, you're talking about that pass rush, so you got to go over there with Coach Sean Spence, Mr. Captain Chaos, and Patrick Tony's defense. What is it about this defense that you like? Because, I mean, you've got to learn from guys. Like, you know, you're talking about Brent Cox. You're talking about, you know, a guy like Amari Burney, Ventura Miller. Talk about the guys that you have in the see in front of you and talk about all this Mike P, man. That's a joke of that water orange and blue now. I mean, won a national championship. Talk about all the different uh, resources you got to help you go out there and ball. Um, I mean, I've been meaning to tell the story for a minute. I've been thinking about it. Um, Coming out of high school, I didn't know how loaded the room was until I actually got in there because I knew of a few people, but I didn't, I, I didn't know how loaded the room was. So my freshman year, I came in. We had players like Ventra and Miller. Amari Brandy, uh, Jeremiah Moon, who played for the Ravens, uh, Mahmoud did about to just won a pack for a championship, Tyron Hopper, all uh, SEC linebackers. So I'm like, my freshman year, I'm coming in like, oh, whoa, whoa, these guys legit. And instead of being like the person, like, like I'm not playing, I'm like just throwing fits, why not just learn from them? So I just took different things from each one of them, like Ventrell, great vocal leader, Mahmoud, relentless, like always into the ball, like, no matter like what he like, no matter if the play bust, he gonna get to the ball. Tyron Hopper, like he just always in the right spot at the right time. So I just feel like no matter like even if I wasn't playing, I'm here for a reason, and that reason will be for me to learn until it's my turn to actually like go out there and represent. And then when it is my turn, just just live up to the standard, live up to the the linebacker standard for being a Florida Gator. Where does that where does that come from, though, Scooby? Though, because you a guy that's never not. I listen. I know how you got your. I know how you got your nickname coming out of middle school saying. <laughs> This dude six seven six eight, and I saw what he just did to him. Oh no, bro, you're not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna do me like that. So I know where the nickname come from, but patience. That's the hardest. I think the hardest thing for a player is not the scheme. It's waiting my time and saying, look, that dude that's in front of me, he was a big time player, coming from whatever state he came from, whatever. Uh, you know, where did you learn that patience to be able to, to not get frustrated? Because I'm good enough to be out there, but the guy in front of me, man, he's just as good. Um. I can't say I always had it because my freshman year, like, I always told myself how I'm going to come in and play. And when I realized I wasn't playing, like, the first time Coach Mullen said, um, told us who wasn't traveling, I can't lie. I was I was a little hurt, but then and then again, I just I just had to sit back and realize, like, um, I had to talk to my parents. I was like, my this is different. I ain't never, like, not play. And then that's when she just sat me down. My dad just sat me down. I was like, hey. Your time going to come, so what you really going to do with it? So, and then my coaches, my coach, he rock, like he said, he, he told me, he was like, this is your time now to get accustomed to everything, get used to it, like, because your time going to come eventually. So, basically, I just play the, uh, you got to play the long, not even the long, it just, just, just being where your feet are, and then just, just living in the moment, because you only do it once. So, and I only got to be around the players once. I only got to be around my mood one year. He transferred, they all transferred. So, I just, just took everything I could from him. And apply it to my own game. So I guess this whole like waiting thing, it wasn't that bad because I didn't I didn't got better as a player and better as a person. You feel me? And, um I feel like that's what's that's what's missing nowadays. Kind of due to the transfer portal when it's so easy to go like play somewhere else. You feel me? And then my mom and my dad always told me, you're gonna start something, you gotta finish it. So I'm I'm here and I'm not leaving. So why not? Scuba, just to listen to you talk about the fact that that's something you had to learn. Like, like you say, hey, listen, see Rob, I tell you, listen, man, I didn't recruit you to not play, but this the life of college football, certain things you can only experience once you get on campus. Like, we can't tell you every single thing. Now, obviously, you're good enough to go out there and make it happen for us once you get out there. Yeah. But isn't it crazy when you watch yourself from one year to the next on film? You're like, dude, who? Who was that last year? Like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Is that yeah. that's you? It's, it's like night and day, or it's like, oh, this is what really happens. One year out of high school, you go back to one of your games, right? You go back to, and you say to yourself, dude, they ain't even moving. Like, no, like, was I moving? Because you moving in high school, you fast for high school, but then you go to college one year and you realize y'all boys ain't moving for real, bro. You go to a, go watch one of my practices. But it's going to make you so much better of a player because you learn, all right, man, I can sit over here and not play and I can feel a type way about it. 
and it's going to make me, you know, salt, you know, sulk in it, get mad at my coach, get mad at my players, teammates. Or I can say, all right, I'm going to get faster. I'm going to get stronger. And when they call my number, once they say you starting, hey, bro, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going back to a reserve role. All right. Dan exactly. Mullen. Now you got Billy Napier. I don't I don't know what phase y'all on. Scooby, y'all got more phases than a good Lord. Every time, <laughs> they, got this, they, got that phase, they got this phase. They got this. I mean, you don't even got to tell me what phase you on, but talk about talk about the attention to detail to a guy like Billy Napier, who he's like, look, fellas, y'all gonna know your teammates. It's not just the defense knowing the defense. You're gonna know the defense, offense, you're gonna know the equipment staff, you're gonna know the training staff. Talk about how much better of a player it makes you when I know every everybody in the building. Mm, it make it do make it um like Billy Napier is like everybody like a part of the team. Like no matter who you are, no matter what you do, what your job type is, everybody contributes to the team's success. So in order like for that even to be a thing. You got to know who you're talking to. You got to know who's handing you the stuff. You got to know who's, who's rehabbing your foot or something. Like, you got to know these people. And he just made that, like, a big emphasis when he first got here. Just knowing your teammates and knowing the people who uh, support you every day. Because at the end of the day, without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And uh, with a guy like Billy Napier, he kind of sets up our schedule and it sets up everything we do to, like, uh, to make it to make it, make it it a way where, you like, you can't fail. Like, like. Yeah, that, that's basically that's basically it. Like he just sets up everything from meetings to practice to where you eat, the way you live, to where you can't fail. The only way you can't fail is if you legit don't do it. And that's even with academics. You got tutors, you got the Hawkins Center, you got everything. So yeah, I got like Nate Perry. He's gonna make sure you're in the right place at the right time and uh be able to succeed. You are like, you, you are can always... you can succeed. Huh? I wanna be. You go ahead, you, you go ahead. I, I was just going to add a little something. Like, even if you do the bare minimum, that's going to be enough in their system for you to succeed in life or at least to finish and get your degree. You are already, you are already about to be a junior in the classroom. Like, people talk about how fast college goes. It goes fast. You go from freshman right. year trying to figure it out. Is it going by fast to you? Are you saying this? Or do that? I just got here, and I'm already going into my junior year in the classroom. Uh yeah, I didn't I didn't had a, a couple of talks to my homeboys. We were talking about we was just in middle school. And then we were talking about we was just in high school. Now we just didn't graduate <laughs> like two years, and then you make you realize, okay, why is life going so fast? And um, I don't know because we having so much fun or the freedom or what it is, but it's time going by too fast. So I remember in kindergarten, it took forever for the day to be over with, <laughs> but now it's like the day over with just like that. <laughs> so yeah. A college football athlete schedule. You heard about it, right? Before you get on campus. Mm -hmm. And people really, really don't understand. They just say, oh man, it ain't like that. You're like, bruh, I don't even got time for me sometimes. Like sometimes I'll just sit in the house for like cause to like you say, you gotta live. You gotta, you got, you know, you gotta go watch film, you gotta go to practice, you gotta go eat, you gotta go to tutoring, you gotta go to train, you gotta go, you know, uh, get treatment. Was that what how was the structure for you adjusting to just how much work? Because when everybody else's day ends, that's when your day is beginning. <laughs> Talk about the structure of college football and saying, bruh, I don't know how many hours we put in each week, but I guarantee you, whatever the NCAA allotted time is, bro, we, we, we'll go over that in three days. <laughs> no, nah, that's how I do be feeling sometimes. But um, kind of like the, tr the transition from high school to college wasn't that bad for me because I went to like an IB school and uh, my, like all the schools I've been to from Princeton, like from elementary to high school, it was always like cream of the crop when it came to academics. So I used to load you with work. So basically, if it was hard in, if it was hard in elementary school, it was going to be easier in middle school. If it was hard in it was going to be easier. I feel like the load just gradually got lighter, even though it was still hard. So when I got to college, I'm like, that's it? academic wise I'm like, that's all I got to do. I'm like, okay, that's sweet. And then, uh, um, but going to football side, it does. Some of your days do get long, especially I'm not even gonna get in the fall camp. Now that's that's the real kicker. But when it comes to like stuff out of season or in season, anything other than fall camp is kind of fine as long as you do what you got to do. Because my mom, she's a school teacher, so she made sure like grades come first, uh, damn football. So um, you got a whole lot college day. It's a, it's a lot now. Don't get me wrong. It's not it's not for the average joke. But I feel like if you really love the sport and if you're really passionate about it, then it should come easy. Come natural. The voice y'all listen to right now is Jeremiah Scooby Williams, Birmingham, Alabama, Ramsey High School. And we finna get into it. 
on this latest installment of 84 Reasons. It's not know about y'all Alabama boys. You know, you got Mobile. <laughs> You got Tuscaloosa, I guess. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to give Tuscaloosa to that because they got University of Alabama. You got Auburn. And, you know, you got Birmingham. Now, look, you down at the University of Florida, you know them Florida boys. They love where they from. They love it. You here in Duval. You here in Dade County. You here in Orange County. You here in Seminole County. Man, what's the difference in a Birmingham kid in Alabama compared to a Mobile kid in Alabama? Uh, I always like to tell people that, like, when they anytime I tell somebody I'm from Birmingham or even I'm like, oh, you country, I'm like, nah, you sadly mistaken because Birmingham in reality is nothing but a small Atlanta <laughs> without the skyscrapers. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, I'm really from the city. So like, but then they can tell me I got an accent, which which is which is which is not which is not false. I do got a little accent. I can't say, <laughs> but um, the probably a big difference is, uh. I guess Birmingham gonna be like a small Atlanta, and Mobile would probably be like a, like a, maybe like a big bigger Tallahassee. <laughs> I don't know. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. so basically, what Scooby is trying to do right now, he's trying to not call a Mobile boy country. Like I'm trying my best not to call them country over there. Them boys. Yeah, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you see. So, but yeah, like Birmingham City, anything else? I believe it's like, mm, you feel? Me? But yeah. Gainesville is definitely changing from the from my time when I was at Gainesville to now, man. Y'all boys now, y'all number one, y'all got this new facility. Y'all meeting each other at the hot tub or at the pool, y'all drinking smoothies, <laughs> y'all eating asparagus, y'all got a chef and all this other type of stuff. But <laughs> what was your welcome to the SEC moment? Because people hear about SEC football. Everybody think they want to play SEC football. What was what was Scooby Williams welcome to the SEC moment? Um, I think my work up to the SEC, uh, either my freshman year or most recently this year. I'm going to start with this year. Uh, last year, I didn't travel. And this year, we traveled. But this year, I traveled. So we had a role game. First, it was Utah. But that's not really SEC. But the like the work in the SEC moment would be when we played Tennessee at Tennessee, it was so loud, like, <laughs> like, cause we played, in a, we played, we played at like a. Uh, I've been to an NFL game, and that was like the loud, that was probably like the loud. I'm like, okay, this is this is a lot. And then we got the Tennessee. Oh my god, <laughs> it was so loud. Like, you, you, like, you talk about hostile environments, it can get hostile. In there. Like the crowd, like the, their fans are their fans are crazy. And um, yeah, and then and then like been, this being your first time playing. And you actually having to go out there with the crowd in your ear and knowing you can't mess up or they're going to get extreme. Like, that could be, that'll be my SEC moment for this year. And then last year when we played Alabama at home and the swamp was rocking. I'm talking about, you can't even hear, I couldn't even talk on the sideline in my home, but because I got to get close because it's so loud. So, yeah, that was like my two welcome to the SEC moments. Everything goes was pretty chill. Yeah. Tyson Nealon up there and, uh, Knoxville, over 100,000 with that sherbet yellow on. That's sherbet, people. That's not orange. That's sherbet. That's baby throw up orange. That's that's what we call it. Uh, <laughs> and then you talk about the swamp, obviously. It's, it's crazy. But, you know, <clears throat> Billy Napier, you know, even getting back to him, I don't know what it's like to be a coach in the SEC. I sure as hell don't know what it's like to be an SEC head coach. But – what you got recruited by Dan Mullen, but now you, you know, obviously you stayed around for Billy Napier. What was it about mm -hmm. Billy Napier that made you say, Look, I know you said earlier, my parents told me, Listen, man, you finish what you start. But what was it about Billy Napier to let you know, Hey, man, this dude can help me do everything I'm trying to do? Um, based off his like background, based off his background, um, I knew he wasn't like a bad coach, like he had the experience being coached when, like, I think it was at Clemson with Dabo. Bama with Nick Saban up under two good head coaches. So the experience is there. So that wasn't a, like a problem. And the way he came in and then like, so before he came, we had like a lot of problems. Like we had like the food, I'm pretty sure I know the parking. And he came to fix that with like two weeks. I'm like, okay, he's, he's about to play as he fit. So I just bought in to the system and it wasn't, wasn't bad. So I feel like if it was like bad, I just couldn't handle it. I'm like, okay, man, let's talk about leaving. But it was, it was fine. 
How much did that really resonate with y'all, though, Scooby, though? Because, you know, when it comes to a head coach, I mean, we've had a bunch of them. It's usually their way or no way. Like, I mean, y'all going to adjust to what I do, and that's mm-hmm. it. But y'all say, it's all, and then it's like as a player, you say, don't ask me what the problem is and you ain't going to adjust it. Like, if you just want to know just to know, what's the point? Hey, man, food, done. Uh, you know, obviously parking, done, and, and that's two of the probably 20 things he's done since he's been there. How much easy is it, is it to really – listen to a coach when he's really, you know, he said, look, man, he cares about what happened with us away from the field. The least we can do is go out there and try to ball for him on the field. Um, Yeah, it's really, it really just boys. Uh, I'm going to do my part as long as I do your part. So um, that's basically what it is. We're going to handle football. We're going to handle everything that we need in order to play football. You feel me? So, yeah. Scooby, when you was at Florida, you know, before y'all got all bougie with the with the new facility, y'all had to walk mm. up them steps. Y'all had to cross <laughs> the street. You had to walk <laughs> to the facility. And for people who don't know, listen, what they've been doing this since I was up for before I was there. It's like, bro, everybody, I can't even get that extra five minutes. I got to leave ten minutes before, and don't and and don't let it be raining. I got to go up these steps. I <laughs> right. Up the I got this. I got that. I got to tell fans. Listen, I love y'all. I'm going to practice. I don't sign autographs. On the way to practice. Now, well, you get y'all boys walk right out of the facility. You get that extra five minutes. You know, I mean, talk about this new facility y'all got, man. Because I saw it. I ain't been down there yet. Ryan, you know, my producer, man, Ryan, he went down there. Mm-hmm. He met Tim Tebow. They gave him the royal treatment. So when I go, I'm going to say, hey, man, I'm, I'm treat me like Ryan. But talk about that new facility, man, how nice it is. Uh, the facility is really nice. It has everything that you need from the, uh, the new team room which is like a big movie theater um, for nutrition, all the snacks, you know, uh, a fine weight room. Uh, it's really nice. It's really big, actually. That's the only thing I, I kind of dislike about it. The old facility, every, everything, like, if I had means at 12.50, I could leave at 12.48 to be good. No, I can't do that now. Like a walk from the locker room to the, uh, to the uh, position meeting, you got to leave like five minutes early. But everything else is good. Um, we really, we, are, we really are appreciative, uh, appreciative for um, all the donors who donated to help us get that because it was, like, really needed. And we don't have to do that walk <laughs> to get to practice. You can just walk right outside. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really nice. Scooby, how, how dangerous can y'all boys be moving forward? I mean, I know, obviously, six and seven is not what nobody wanted to be last year. But, you know, new head coach, new scheme, new way of doing things, new offense, new defense. But 2023, man, y'all got some players on both sides of the ball, but specifically the linebacker position. How dangerous can that linebacker position with y'all boys playing playing together as one unit? I feel like we put in work this offseason, get accustomed like to everybody, like all the new guys here. I feel like we get accustomed to this jail. I feel like the sky's the limit. We got a good coach, good coordinator. Yeah. We got to put it together. So look, man, is 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 coach is coach Sean Spence really that crazy? Like I've seen it, you know, I've seen him dunking on players. Uh, you know, how what type of energy is Coach Sean Spence, Captain Chaos, bringing to practice every day, man? Whatever video you're seeing on social media, that's him in real life. He doesn't change. I don't think he's ever gonna change. He's energetic. I can say that for the light, say the least. His voice will like lift the room. <laughs> Like I was walking to, I was walking to Lyft, and he just yelled at something that was upstairs. <laughs> it made me you feel I had to do a double take. You feel me? So yeah, he he, bought, he he was he's a character for real. I gotta show Mike Peterson some love, man. I played against Mike P. Mike P's older than me, but I played against Mike P for four years. I was with the Titans. He was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Obviously, second round pick to the to the Colts. Spent in this career with Atlanta mm-hmm. Falcons, but Mike P can play. Like Mike P was an everything linebacker. Did not come off the field. If they went to dime, right. he, should, he, he was already in the middle. So if they go to dime, they go to nickel. Learning from a guy like that, like a guy that played, you know, wore the same uniform you wore, played the same position you played, how much can you learn from a guy who knows, if he if he tell you to do something, listen, bro, this is what it takes to not just do it on this level, but the next level. Nah, Mike Peter really, uh, like a really respectable coach. Um, name, like everything you just said, yeah. And then some, so basically, he really is a cool coach. So uh, that makes you, like, want to listen more, knowing what he done done. So you know he's been there. He knows how to get there. So why not listen to him? So, um, yeah. 
get to train some great players on the way there too. So it's always a plus to have a coach like Mike P in your uh, position room. All right, Scooby man. I'm listen. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to Birmingham unless I'm, unless I'm with you. Where the hell are we eating at? Like, what are we gonna do? I said, listen. I, we, I'm sitting here with Scooby. We, where are we going to eat? And is the food gonna be good? Because I the last time I went to Birmingham, I went to a barbecue spot, and the lady gave me a whole loaf of bread with some barbecue sauce. Like, this is just eat this. I'm like, what? <laughs> eat the whole loaf of bread. Dip it in the bar- so where are we going to eat if we in Birmingham? Or well, I always tell everybody, no, nobody food is better than Birmingham food. But if you want to get specific, hold on, <laughs> specific, you got to go to the wings, man. So um, we got this spot called Wing Out, Wing Plus, Jay's Wing, Exotic Wings. <laughs> Anything with wings in it in Birmingham is gonna be good. So yeah, make sure you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to get. You get K no lemon pepper, Cajun ranch fries with a kiki poo. Or or Tang Bang. The last one is the name of drinks. And you get wait, that wait, wait, wait. It's, called a, it's called a Tang Bang? A Tang Bang. <laughs> hey, so let, me, let, me, let me tell y'all something, too. You know why I can understand what, what uh, Scooby is saying? Because I'm a country boy myself. See, Scooby just said I'm from the city. No, no, no. You got big buildings where you're from. It's a country. <laughs> you got big so Birmingham, this is Birmingham, for those of you who don't know. Birmingham is nice. Big buildings. Like, you know, big buildings. But the reason, see, country boys, you understand country boys. If if Scooby had to say to me to a bunch of people, they're gonna say, "What did you say, Scooby?" I'm t- a tang. I'm. T- can you hear what I'm saying to you? And don't let it. <laughs> you really not gonna know what it says. So basically, I'm not going to Birmingham without Scooby. I'm gonna tell you for one reason. I want to know. I, I love wings. I'm a wing connoisseur. They got to be fried, very, very crispy. Though. I don't like that side. I like mine fried. Really, like uh, I know you've been to Gators Dock side since you've been to Gainesville. I've never been actually. What are you, Scooby? Scooby, Scooby, let me tell you something. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm not telling you how to live your life, Scooby. Listen, between now and the season starting, you need to go to Gators Dockside and you need to get you some Caribbean jerk or some scooter. They got all you can eat wings, I think, on Monday nights. You are not a wing connoisseur yet, Scooby, until you go to Gators Dockside, man. Come on, man. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see about I'm gonna see about real. I ain't never heard of it, but. I'm almost well, let's, let's, let's see, them boys bougie. You know why? Because they eating good. They, they they eat them chefs cooking for y'all so good. <laughs> y'all, y'all boys ain't even eating out. You, you over here saying, did you put my, did you put my, yeah, man, I put your little sprinkle up. Because y'all get the <laughs> made to order. But Scuba, just know this, man. I remember when you came out, man. I remember when you did your, your commitment video was, was going crazy. I said, dude, if you don't hurry up and pick a school, I said, Scooby, just tell us where you're going. Because I saw you <laughs> coming in at the end. I saw you with the Florida Gator, obviously hoodie on, and you said, "Man, I'm going, you know, you know, go Gators." But you're gonna be one of the ones, man, because you got the right attitude. The hardest thing in college football is not can he play; it's when he play, is he ready? It's always that. Right. I mean, when you put him out there, is he ready? Because that's what coaches talk about in the meeting room. It's not that they don't want to put you out there too early, because you you see what happens. Player goes out there too early. By the time it's time for him to ball, his confidence gone. He, he just right. he ain't got up here, but. Boy, by the time they put you out there, I said that one seven finna go crazy out there. I say, you know, but when you get your when you no, when you get your when you get your sack fumble in the end zone against Georgia in Jacksonville, man, I mean, do uh, is uh is Billy Napier gonna let y'all have a little dance or do you just got to run to the sideline and you know get right? I'm gonna hit my dance. I can't cap. <laughs> I'm gonna hit my dance. It ain't gonna be enough to throw like throw a flag, but I'm gonna hit my dance. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you gonna hit a dance or are you gonna hit the Travis Kelsey in the Super Bowl dance? It's gonna be one of those. I mean one of them Jason Kelsey in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean that Jason Kelsey. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, look, so this, this Scooby is basically saying this. I hope I don't get the flag. Because I'm gonna dance. I hope I don't get a flag. And I'm like, coach, I'm sorry, man. But hey, listen, if you get a sack fumble <laughs> or a touchdown in the Florida Georgia game. I can deal with 15 yards. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm not out there, man. So I'm going to do the Jason Kelsey. I'm not doing the Travis Kelsey. I'm going to do the Jason, the Jason Kelsey. On <laughs> them boys. But last thing, man, you know, you talked about your family. You talked about your mom and your dad. And those are the ones. Those are the reasons why we get to do what we do. Those are the ones right. that saw something in us well before we saw it in us. I mean, you know, I got you here, man. What would you say to them? And obviously they're going to. Uh, definitely listen to this uh this conversation. What would you say to uh to, to mom, Dukes, and pops? Uh, 
I appreciate y'all for everything, all the sacrifices y'all made. Y'all made me who I am today. Even all the butt whoopings when I was little that I didn't think I deserved, it didn't help me be who I am today. I done learned a lot, and it kept me out of trouble. So that I, for that, I'm thankful and I'm grateful. And eventually, I'm going to be able to return the favors. So, yeah. He is Scooby Williams. I am being true. This is 84 Reasons. No games, no gimmicks, just reasons. Not my reasons, Scooby Reasons. And when I go to Birmingham, I'm going to say, let me give me the Tang Bang. You know what? <laughs> what is it? The tank? I'm gonna have to call Scooby. Scooby, say it to him because I'm saying it wrong. But Scooby, man, I will be watching you. Do me one favor. Never stop being you. Stay healthy. And like I say, man, whether it's a sack fumble or a sack, I want to. I listen. I want to see the Scooby Kelsey out there. I want to see. I want. I want to see <laughs> that thing, man. Bet for sure. I got you. <laughs>